get you into <clears throat> into the presentation. You know, we're, we're in Haiti. We were using, you know, you know the Haitian students. Said, Why are you here? And um, you know, we're we're doing something, passing out food or something, or uh, and say, well, the Haitian students and the American students are here, are part of a great big story. Um, would you like to hear about it? And uh, we're together, a part, a part of that story. And say, well, how's this? the story has just like every other story, it has a beginning and an ending. Uh, that story has, for the sake of a better way of talking about it, four chapters to it. Four chapters. Chapter one is that God created the world and created you and designed you for good. And so I would, you know, the world and you, and so I draw a world and then draw some people in it and then write over designed for good. And I might, there's some verses out of, you know, some creation verses that I might use that out of Isaiah that, or, you know, and when God designed it for good, it was very good. Uh, he, he pronounced it as very good. Uh, that's chapter one. And I, you know, what do you, th you know, when you look around the world in which you live right now, in both in your relationships with, you know, others and in the world, how does it appear to you? There's better language in the presentation, so the soft cut. Um, and say, well, it doesn't look so for good. Well, that's because of chapter two. Chapter two explains why that is. And chapter two explains that the world has been damaged by evil, and that evil uh, originates in our hearts. And the Bible calls that that evil sin. And it says that all have sinned and fall short of God's good intention for the world. You know, fall short instead of God's glory falls. And so what sin does is it not only divides our relationships, but it, you know, it messes up. And so I'll squiggle the row, you know, squiggle the line between the two, messes up the, uh, the world. And, uh, and that damage affects four relationships. It affects your relationship with God. So your relationship with God is screwed up. Your relationship with self, uh, how you view yourself, you know, you might experience fear or guilt or shame or... Uh, you know, don't understand who you are and your background, uh, your relationship with others, and your relationship with creation. And so you just kind of squiggle out the lines. And they said, uh, where have you, you know, kind of question, if it's more of a dialogue, which it should be, uh, where have you experienced broken relationships? You know, in what area <coughs> of your life have you experienced broken relationships? And get them to talk about that. Well, I don't get along with my family. Or... You know, I, I can't ever do well at school, or I feel distant from God. And said, so, well, that's part of the, that's what this, what the, what this story, this larger story says, is that that's been caused by sin and evil. And this would be a sad story, wouldn't it, if that were the end of the story? But unfortunately, there are two more chapters, and the, and the story gets better and better. Chapter 3 says that to this world that's damaged by evil, God sent Jesus to rescue and renew. <laughs> Not only you in your own heart and restore these relationships, but also all of creation that surrounds you. And he's leading a rebellion. You know, he, it says in the scriptures that Jesus was King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And this is probably where I'd wear John 3:16 said or and explain those two. You know, God, you know, his plan includes redeeming you that whoever would trust in Him um, should begin to experience this good intention that He has for you redefine eternal life so it makes more sense in larger story and uh, God begins to uh, to redeem and restore so that's chapter 3 and the Bible says that after chapter 4 that Jesus began the process of restoration and he's continuing it in chapter 4 and at the end of chapter 4 God will, will set everything right through Jesus as king but right now we're at the beginning of chapter 4 and what God is asking us to do is to choose to follow Jesus and help him restore the world. And so I put a cross in there and then, you know, from the cross, somebody kneel. I actually draw someone kneeling in there. I think I just erased it with my finger. Um, kneeling before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Um, and um, so God, God's inviting you to kneel and join him in his his resistance effort against the evil, against the damage that evil has done. And so, since evil originated in the heart here, 
the beginning to follow Jesus and the restoration towards which chapter 4 is is leading in which God will renew and every you know renew and set everything right completely begins in the heart as well it begins in your heart my heart and everyone's heart and so you know and that's that step comes when you choose to bow the knee or submit to Jesus as king um, and I would probably use the passage repent and believe you know the Bible says to repent and believe in Jesus and part of what that means is to, instead of going in our own direction we turn we turn around and believe and put our trust in the King of Kings and begin to follow him and join him in um, re renewing and restoring the world in the hearts of other folks and then so and then uh, there's a little prayer in there sort of like a four law prayer but it has this sort of language in it um, and then then at the end of that you know Jesus you know, after a guy says, Jesus is rightful king, wants to work on all four of those relationships, your relationship with God, your relationship with self, your relationship with others, your relationship with creation. And usually here I tell about, talk about Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, talk about, you know, this submitting to Jesus. We don't do the, do anything, we just do it by faith, by turning and believing, by trusting. But Ephesians 2.10 says that God has prepared beforehand works for us to do as part of this restoration process. <clears throat> and that God wants you to know uh, those things that he wants you to participate in. Would you be willing to get with me again to talk through what the Bible says about being part of the, the restoration process? <laughs>